good evening uh, everyone thanks for joining in for our thursday night talks as we wait for a few of our more chat members to join in we are going ahead to start our call for the day uh, before we move forward i just want to take this moment to acknowledge and thank our sponsors who have joined us as an annual sponsor at hyderabad uh, thank you bitcom group boxen university athena global dallas venture capital fuji inc Super Labs, Loistro, Startcap Advisory, Eham, Ezone Securities, Finvista, and Jupiter Investment. We thank all our sponsors who has been played a crucial role in planning all the activities for the year 2022. Uh, with that said, with no much delays, I just want to uh, give a small guidelines to our participants. I would request all the attendees to continue to stay on the mute with the cameras and mic off. Please use the chat window to ask any questions to the speakers and to the moderators. uh also we have this uh, it was uh, advised by our speakers that today we will run through active some polls so that we also get to know that how much we are into the session with no much delays i will further pass on this to our executive director mr vasu rao to introduce our speakers and also our moderator uh good evening everybody welcome to another exciting session of our thursday night talk it's become a very popular event and since i've been here i've seen people really enjoying and benefiting from this talk today's topic is an interest to all of us which is the do's and more importantly the don'ts of angel investing uh, i would now like to introduce the moderator for the session mr rakesh gupta rakesh is a seasoned education sector specialist with over 8 plus years of experience in the education sector and has act extensively advised clients in the case well and higher education on market entry and expansion strategy business planning fund raise and m&a he has more than 15 years of experience in consulting fund raising and m&a and has earlier worked with mckinsey and company in gurgaon rakesh has an mba in finance from the indian school of business hyderabad and a bachelor degree in computer science from the institute of technology kharagpur um next one to i'd like to introduce and talk about our speaker for today mr ratnakar uh he's very well known in the hyderabad circles of uh, angels he's an investment director in portfolio management at hyderabad angels he has a total of 18 years of experience in the field of corporate finance fund raising risk assessment audit and taxation currently hyderabad angels has done 37 investments with four exit with an average return of 3x of course today he has some secrets up his sleeve he's talked of an exit of 410x before joining hyderabad angels he has worked startups helping them streamline finance and operation functions he is also active in fundraising activities for startups <laughs> prior to that he worked with spencer retails part of rpg group icicic bank and snag lending division as regional head and head of corporate finance with prolifix a leading it consulting firm with 1500 employees less having a presence in the usa canada uk and india but nakar is a chartered accountant a phd mba from symbiosis university pune and i am a bangalore alumni so uh, over to you rakesh uh, to moderate and uh, ask that nakar the tricky questions of angel investing thank you thank you renewa sir thank you suresh garu and finally thank you that nakar Uh, it's a pleasure to have you for this conversation. I think uh, I was just I was just told that you made an exit of 10x from investment today, and I'm I'm very very interested and excited to know uh, some of the secret sauce which leads to that kind of an exit. Uh, but before we go to the nuts and bolts, I think there are uh, I'll just kind of lay down what we want to do in the session today. Right? Uh, I think we'll start to know. a little bit about your journey right what you what got you started with in the investing how was your experience been uh, what are some of the key milestones that you've seen on the journey we we'll love to know a little bit from you about what trends that you are seeing uh, in the sector per se and then specifically kind of come back to a uh, very specific advice right that because i think most of the folks who are either here or will listening to this uh, session would love to know that how do you kind of create the midas touch that you have created over 10x kind of an exit right so we'll go into the specifics of that uh, per se so those are the three specific elements on which would like to spend uh, the time on 
the audience, if you guys have any questions, feel free to use the chat box to uh, pose your questions as well. Uh, we have some interesting polls which Wamsi and team will also run. So do participate in that. It will give us good insights about about what what you guys are thinking of as well. So yeah. So without much ado, I'll, I'll start with Ramesh, uh, sir, with you. Uh, I saw an interesting thing in your in your profile. You started uh, the early part of your career as a as in the ICICI uh, credit division, right, and the SME AG division, providing loans to corporates. And from there, you kind of moved to the angel investing side. So one is a completely risk covers. Uh, I would say job profile, not completely, but significantly risk covers for job profile. And one which is uh, like extremely, I would say pretty much like gambling or betting in the, in the Indian investing side. What, what made this transition happen? What, what made you switch from uh, a, a regular corporate investing world to an angel investing world? Thank you, Rakesh, I think. First of all, I thank uh, Suresh Rajagaru for uh, giving this opportunity and the rest of the time members who are invited me. Uh, I think me and Rakesh had some extensive discussion, but some of the points which he raised, I'll come back to you. So uh, generally, I'm being a chartered accountant. Chartered accountants are conservative in their approach. Please understand. We are not aggressive like MBA candidates from ISB. I think Rakesh is from <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I've been a conservative person uh, till I joined uh, IIM Bangalore as Executive General Management Program where my uh, turning point has come. I can say, uh, I don't know why I picked up. I picked up that activity and it has changed my perception altogether. Otherwise, we were more focused on compliance. And second thing what uh, ICS have made me learn is the business. If you don't understand business very well, I don't know how my cash will be recovered because one of the key point uh, during my training session where Kamath was the chairman at that point of time, he said, Ratnagar, we are taking money from public as deposits and we are giving it as loans to the people. If you look into many of the bank balance sheets, either HDFC, ICIC, access, the net interest rate, that is what the deposit they collect and what they give it as a loan, the net margin they make anywhere between one and a half to two percent. And he clearly said, Ratnagar, if you're, if you're giving a hundred crores loan, the net income what we earn is maybe two to and a half percent in a year, the two and a half crores in a year, which the bank is running. But if that becomes NPA, your entire hundred crores is lost. So with that philosophy, we were very careful in funding, as he said, being a risk averse, but we were focusing on the business, how they're generating the cash and how the money will be recovered by ICC Bank. I think that was a great learning, no NPA during my tenure. Coming back to startup ecosystem, it's an accident. I think I give all the credit to Pradeep Metal. He was the past chairman of Thai and he was the chairman of HA at one point of time. Pradeep uh, has seen me during ICC Bank days. He told Radnagar, why don't you look at uh, Hyderabad Angels Invested portfolio initially? And one of the key struggle uh, the HA was undergoing is how to get exits for the investors. He said the investor journey uh, with the company is very, very important. A lot of people are missing, uh, the founders are missing. Uh, one particular key stakeholder is investor. And he said, uh, I don't know what really missing over there. So I started working with portfolios at that point of time and there was enormous learning. I put every learning as my tick mark. Example, I think a few of them know, I can't name it. We had one company where uh, HA members were excited and invested, but we never realized the government regulation will take a big beating until unless it was growing big government was not bothered. Once it has grown big, they came and beaten. Like today, cryptocurrencies, you all know, they've grown big. There are five, six uh, unicorns across the world. In India itself, there are two, three unicorns. And surprisingly, $10 billion of cash gone out of the cryptocurrency uh, startups that Wazir X or Coin DCX. Uh, Coin Kuber, these are the companies that picked up most of the money on the cryptocurrency. Suddenly, government came and said, "What are profit you are making? I will tax." Correct. Yeah. So this this has hindered 
that particular ecosystem and shake in all the investment thesis what we built. Right. So what I learned in the process is government regulations play a key important role. Pradeep Dubli sir is also there. We stopped investing in uh, drones when they came to us. We stopped investing in space because we felt ISRO is still not allowing private players to go on. Government has not come with any policy maker. So this is one of the experience which we took. I put one experience to you before investing our thing. Second thing we missed is a lot of VCs, I think Rakesh is there. A lot of VCs are observing the behavior trend of the country. What is the behavior trend? Is all people are going on to the mobile. Today, if you ask me the, what is the secret sauce for next decade, 5G is going to revolutionize the entire world. Because today, uh, speech to text, text to speech, speech to speech, a machine, one machine to another machine has going with a hardware in spite of 4G technology being there. In 5G, this is going to be one to many. The recognition is going to be much, 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 much faster. And what we are seeing today in 2022, after the 5G has been coming to the country, you will not see what you're going to see in 2025. So we should identify the companies which are focusing on 5G based technologies where we want to invest. What I missed, uh, one of the things we missed in HA also is we are not seen what is next three years potential investment opportunity where economy is going to change in a shorter speed, a span of life. We only invested in idea. We liked, okay, when startup came and said they are doing something, we liked it. Uh, some of our uh, members in Thai are also members of HA. They went and invested. What we missed is uh, the founder experience in running a startup, in running an entrepreneurship. Correct? Uh, I'll give you one example. Recently, I was chatting with ISB. ISB is also trying to do incubation. And they recently put a meeting with the Telangana Ministry, why Hyderabad is not growing as a startup the entrepreneurship base. So many Mumbai angels and other people are coming, they were discussing many things. I only requested ISB, we have IIT, IIMs and everybody who are incubating the startups very well. But what is lacking to this startup founders today is the leadership capability of driving an organization from 10 to 1000. Everybody know how to do zero to 10. They don't know how to raise from 10 to 1000. Today, that is the requirement of the startup which they are missing. And I was requesting ISB people to identify various startups in these incubators in Hyderabad, who is doing extremely well they're struggling on scaling because they don't have leadership capabilities. And we are asking many founders, what is your core weakness? Is it sales? Is it technology? Is it strategy? Is it execution on the ground? That weakness is one thing we are requesting our angels or we as HA team trying to work and put what is the critical objective for that startup to succeed. We see many has good ideas, but they are not able to succeed because they are not able to identify the clear weakness of executing the transaction. No, so, that's very quiet. Quiet, doesn't Yeah. So this is a few points. I'll just give you at high level. These are the few points. Coming back as uh, Rakesh has one question: How are you seeing startup ecosystem over a period of time? So when 2017, uh, when I joined Hyderabad Angels, I was also new. I really don't know. I, every startup coming and presenting, I liked it. I think everybody is worth for investing. But by end of 2019, when I came and uh, taken over as investment director, and my journey with portfolio over a period of two years has given a lot of enlightening things in terms of performance, which I explained to you very well. And what we are seeing is there are three phases of startup has happened. Phase one is demonetization. Demonetization helped fintech startups to grow multifold. Because 
100 crores people are there in india all 100 crores people need to use in one way or other way the banking channel fintech has given that boost that's why all the vcs in their portfolio and sector fintech is one of the base which we identified second thing is gst gst has made many black transactions into white transactions that is given an opportunity to increase multifold increase in the transactions we have seen many of the e-commerce companies was able to grow during this period because the change in the policy of the government and demonetization prior to that has been amazing the third thing is geo getting introduced in 2000 end of 2017 geo was introduced to india where they revolutionized internet economy which has grown more than 5x over a period of 3 years i think you all would have seen in newspapers the geo even a driver a watchman a bus keeper everybody started seeing on the mobile phone the tvs youtube they started offering this opportunity has been taken many that has been finally accelerated by covid correct no correct that resulted surge in transactions in one year we have seen 44 unicorns in india and currently in last uh, two months we have seen the eight unicorns born in india as in today so this is what i have seen in the startup ecosystem as in today rakesh great no no i think this is a great summary of what has happened in the in the startup ecosystem over the last few few years at snacker sir and i think today we are here to learn uh, a lot of things from you uh, i remember a couple of days there were back there was a news item which floated in the tai cm group which talked about mumbai having 1500 ultra hni and hyderabad having 467 right i think maybe this session will help us bridge that gap with the learning that we will take and possibly uh, go out and invest in some interesting unicorns so i look forward to that uh, I, my next question, uh, sir, is essentially a trend that I am looking at. Right, I was talking to the founder of this company called Tyke. Have you heard of that? This is a company which is into a community startup investment and which allows, let's say, anybody who can even invest five thousand rupees, a mechanism to have a investment in some kind of a startup. Right. So, uh, and then you look at the things like Shark Tank, which keeps coming up on TV. it seems like everybody and their grandmom is in the startup investing space today right and it seems like too many people who are who are there but it also begs certain set of questions that possibly needs to be clarified right do you think startup investing is for everybody right is there a specific set of people who should look at startup who should not look at startup uh, how should one think about startup as an asset class for themselves like what percentage of their asset should be possibly investment into startup what essentially should be possibly let's say the mechanism to invest in startup right there are, there are mechanisms where people can invest directly into the company or they can be a part of the angel networks like the hyderabad angels or they can actually invest in an early stage fund as well right so what 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 are some of your thought process in terms of who should invest how should they go about the investing what percentage if you can just throw some light on that or something yeah thank you thank you Uh, as i said a lot of times i tell uh, many of the incoming investors in many sessions you should have a disposable income where you are not expecting return back but you are helping to foster entrepreneurship in country like india i think fostering of entrepreneurship is a key word which is helping indian economy to grow much faster today and you know i was always telling uh, do you have money where you don't want a return on it please come and invest in startup if you want a return on it don't come to this asset class it is not more an asset class it is as fostering the entrepreneurship because most of them are first generation entrepreneurs they never been experienced entrepreneurship in their lifetime so uh, in us i think uh, they also started crowdfunding like tyke uh, if you look into their history when they see many people started losing they bought a ecosystem called accredited investor i think you all know i am hoping that is going to happen because if many people started losing government will come with one regulation and this is in the time gap somebody is trying to grasp this opportunity of getting into startup ecosystem and asking to invest 5 5000 rupees 
Again, please understand as per Companies Act, if they are more than 200 shareholders, you cannot run a private limited company, you need to convert into a public limited company. And once you're a public limited company, you have a lot of regulations which you need to follow. I don't know how many are really understanding that and really realizing into the market. I'm surprised, but how the regulation will come back, we need to see, sir, as of today. But I'm saying at least don't, uh, one of the point we were preaching to many of our uh, investors is uh, keep some amount of money towards startup. For example, your capability to lose money this year is 50 lakhs. Invest uh, over a period of uh, two or three startups or four startups, where in one startup you are an active investor because angel investors need to be active. Then only they will become the super angels because they know that by kind of getting into the super angel network, they have a good possibility of growing and getting their reputation on that. And another two, three startups you follow with any of your friend who is investing and taking an active role. I'm seeing many people are putting 20, 30, 40 startups in a year. And technically, recently, there is a list of 100 investors who did more than 40 investments in a year. You ask any of them, you ask any of them out of 40 or out of 100, the success rate is less than 10%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Less than 10% and outlier of getting 10x to 100x, it's one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because me and Pradeep Dubla, sir, we know we discuss heavily during our, our conversation, these outliers which was there at one point, it is coming down, it is coming down. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to invest and take that call, it is up to you because people are happy. For example, the better capital, which came recently right. into this opportunity, they invested in more than 30 or 40 startups. They have one or two which are doing well. Even Kunal Shah, a lot of people thought Kunal Shah investment is good. He's just putting in money. There is an interesting article on economic times. There are few companies which have benefited because he's not giving any connect to the startups, he's just putting in the money. Yeah. So fair enough. I think and that that actually leads us to a very interesting segue from here, right? Which is essentially going into the nuts and bolts of angel investing, right? Um, as I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, there are like there is a dis disciplined approach to be followed through the entire journey of of actually doing angel investing, right? From how do you kind of create an unfair share of deal sourcing for yourself, right? How do you kind of get very attractive set of deal? as an angel investor for yourself, right? So that's one part to it. Second part is that once you have sourced it, how do you kind of essentially possibly close the deal at a valuation which works out for you as well as the founder as well. Then you go into actually portfolio, actively portfolio managing the startup that you have invested in. And finally, and most importantly, how do you finally get an exit, right? The entire life cycle. You have to be disciplined and careful on each of these stages to actually make a 10x kind of a return. I mean, at the at outset, it looks very interesting, but it requires a lot of those hard work. I think we'll break down our next section, Dasnaka sir, into these four segments and take specific advice from you on, as angel investors, what we should be doing uh, to kind of make sure that we are able to create that 10x returns for, on our investment. So if you like, let's start with, let's say, deal sourcing per se, right? I think. You mentioned a very interesting concept of super angel. You mentioned a very interesting concept of investing in one startup where you can play an active role, but in the other startups, you essentially have somebody else leading and you are supporting that entirely. So how do you go about creating a good deal source pipeline for, 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 for an angel investor? Thank you, thank you. So Rakesh, one of the key thing, because I, I don't know, I being a finance person coming from chartered account and fraternity, uh, two questions I will ask, always ask the startup. You have a ask a fund. You want one crore, two crore, one million, two million. We wanted to understand with this fund, what are the desired outcomes? What are the desired outcomes? For, for example, today he has 10 customers per month. Is he taking to uh, 10,000 customers a month or 5,000 customers a month? Or today you have a lot of people are clicking onto your platform. For example, the downloads are, sir, I'm seeing 2,000 downloads a month. I want to make it 20,000 downloads a month. We need scale today. Today the scale is the clear results what we are looking at. 
So we are asking what is the purpose of this fundraise and what is the desired outcome. If we can satisfy that he can execute what he is asking, that will result in another round of fundraise. For example, for example, today Rakesh, uh, somebody at Seed need to raise Series A. The multiple has gone up. Uh, we know clearly. Uh, just to give you an example, somebody is doing around three lakhs per month run rate. I'm just giving you. Somebody need to raise a Series A. He should do one crore of run rate. They mm -hmm. will not get if they are doing below one crore. Our experiences have told very clearly. So the fund, what they're asking to me, does it help him to reach that number? Second thing, the channel, what they're using. Is it a digital channel or is it offline? Today, it is online first and offline second. So they, we want clearly online is the agenda for us. So that's a clear objective which we are looking at. I just put two, three points because of the lack of time which we look in. Once we are satisfied, coming back to investor ecosystem, we are all financial investors. We are not strategic investors. Generally, the rule of the thumb in financial world is a financial investor should hold less than 10%. He should be a minority stakeholder in the company. The max he can go is he should not hold substantial stake in the company. What is substantial stake? Less than 20%. If you are holding more than 20%, you are called as a substantial investor the liabilities of the company will also fall on you if you are holding more than 20%. Whatever mistakes is doing on the compliance side, anybody wanted to put a case and other things. So we want to be part of this too, either less than substantial shareholder or I want to be a minority shareholder. So if I am satisfied with the two crores or a one million or a one, two million dollar fundraise, since I want to hold less than certain percentage stake, my valuation will get derived on that. That's point number one. Second thing, when I look at valuation, how many multiples of revenue we are doing? At start of seed level, it is clearly, clearly, clearly revenue multiple. At seed stage, a lot of people looking at 20 to 40 times is the multiple revenue. And they go to series A, series B, series C. It is going to 60 to 100 times multiple of the revenue based on which the valuation will come. So the valuation is like an art. There is no science. How do you play that game? How do you look into his fundraise before investing it? It is very, very clear. These are the two agenda points which we missed in the past. We invested. If somebody will come and say, sir, I need two crores. I want to do, do, do. After this, if you need to raise seed fund or you need to raise pre-series A, if you need to raise series A, does he reach the desired objectives of a VC? VC world looks at certain objectives before investing into the startups. So we ask these questions very persistently to the start of an are you achieving these numbers? This is where we look at it. Then we only we recommend to our investors, okay, this guy is good. He knows what he wanted to deliver. is exactly there. Let us go and invest into the startup. So what you're saying is essentially uh, whether the plan is there, uh, which can be executed, which will take it to a, a three series A or a series A kind of a fundraise, whether it's a digital first or online first company uh, per se. And third is obviously uh, what's, the, what's the overall market size and trend going around that. Yeah, yeah. that's a clear thing, Rakesh. Now coming back to your question on exit. <laughs> we face many problems in HA also, some of the members have said, we are asking many of the founders, how do you see your investor journey? And where do you want to exit this angel investor? A lot of founders were surprised when I asked this question. This question is important in my assessment very clearly. Second thing, what we observed as an angel investors, uh, I will tell you, sir, most of the people should know from C to series B, the multiples will go anywhere between 5x to 100x. But from series B to unicorn, the multiples will be 3x to 10x max. Never ever see it is going to be much more. You look into any startup investment, any startup, the risk level at that stage the risk level is coming down. The returns are coming down. Please understand this very clearly. 
we are advising we are advising many of our investors in ha since they moved from c to certain level of series b from there the returns are going to be small it is not as big as that better take an exit at that level and invest is another startup where your multiple irr will grow i hope you all agree right. if you keep in ola 3 years back the 10 crores would have become 20 crores but the same 10 crores i spread around a 2 3 angel invest the 10 crores will become 100 crores your angels are there to do that take risk and make more money but if you look at series b and above we see returns are coming down we are requesting our investors if you want to take an exit at series a or series b because the returns are good please take the money out don't hold it because returns are going to come down from there only to your psychological happiness i am part of success story of a unicorn correct correct so no? oh, that's a tag value which comes along with that right yeah. you know, investor in great uh, uh, i'll just take a step back and go back to the the deal sourcing side of it right i think today if you look at a lot of venture funds have started early stage investing as well they have started to actually put money at the same time as which angels are putting we talked about uh, super angels being very very active as well uh, again there is so much so much competition for the right set of companies to invest in right uh, how do you kind of as a investor or as a angel network how do you kind of source those companies that that possibly you think that are, are the right ones to invest in right i mean how do you kind of get more number of relevant companies for 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 your startup thank you rakesh i think because the startup ecosystem started booming i think last 3 years we are seeing even parents uh, i was telling in many forums parents are telling their sons and daughters to do startup not to look for jobs i think this has been searched more than maybe 100x in last 4 years from 2018 to 2022 as in today more and more startups are coming in tire one tire two cities it is amazing every college every school every uh, company is speaking about startup today the problem has become many for uh, angel networks like us who has been there for a decade in the system and even the new age angel networks which are coming i only see new age investors uh, we do, it is not common we see this is a very positive trend for entrepreneurs who are getting in money but we are seeing lot of commoditization is happening and they are grasping the current opportunity of unknown investors where to invest and they are just taking the money out and doing it i only caution on that but anyway that is helping the ecosystem to grow collaborations are happening positively is what they so in our investment thesis at ha we always propagate five things before investing in the startup one is clearly the cap table our experience in the past our experience even in the now if an investor if a founder dilutes his stake below 60% before raising series a it is clearly no 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 please understand i have seen some of the early age angel investors uh, by putting 25 lakhs 40 lakhs into the company they taken our stake of 30% 35% that poor guy will come back to us sir we are a good startup we want a fund i said today for me the funnel is too big why i need to invest in a startup where the cap table has fallen near to 60% of the founder vcs are not interested to invest for us the cap table is very 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 important the second thing what we observed uh, in our journey in my portfolio journey is uh, the clearly the market size if that particular product or a service is a niche market or it is a mass market for example the market size of this niche is 100 crores and this guy wanted to take 30% or 40% of the market share is it an investable company for us or the market size is more than uh, 2 billion to 3 billion dollars still he holds a small stack and potential to grow is big not only this too many of the pitch decks have confused us they are putting tam sam and other things we are not looking into tam and sam of that particular business we are looking into the market size we are looking for a cagr growth more than 5% if the cagr growth for next 3 years is less than 5% it is clearly no case if cagr growth is more than 10% in that particular industry 
we wanted to bring them for investment because that growth what is happening in that industry this fellow will have an opportunity to take a pie otherwise he will never have an opportunity to take a pie in that industry third thing we look at founders experience uh, we were telling to many of the cases if is a college going student the aggression is much higher the potential to grow is much higher what we observed in the scale they are falling flat because they are need to deal with a uh, little bit older generation and they don't listen to this founder we see many cases getting told that's why we are looking for founders in the age of 25 to 35 who are more aggressive today we are seeing startups where uh, founders are more than 35 years or 45 years of age but we are choosing that in investing not it the fourth thing because we are buying certain research reports we are part of certain research uh, logins what we have whether that particular startup is a supplement or it is a substitute this is one clear point which we are looking at third the uh, second thing is how many startups in this space already raised series a or series b for example in ed tech industry you all know india has 33 crores of student from lkg to degree class in 33 crores lkg to k12 there are 24 crore students are there in this 24 crore student today byju has occupied 80 lakhs to 1 crore students on that platform why because the parents who can afford to pay 25000 rupees per year out of the school student there are only 4 crores are there in the market it is expected to grow as the per capita income of the indian population is growing from 900 dollars to 3000 dollars now and i expect it to reach 6000 dollars that's why byju vedantu an academy they all started growing because parents are effort to pay that money otherwise lot of children uh, parents are still not effort to pay out of the school so we are expecting that to grow so we have seen in that 10 to 15 unicorns will be there in edtech but as in fintech 100 crore population is there there will be 30 to 40 unicorns in fintech that's a base which we are looking at in our investment into start how many has already done and who is the clear leader in that does it have an opportunity you got it that's what we are looking at so i think that that's a very interesting set of criteria to kind of pick the company uh, to invest in um uh, uh taking taking a next step which is around the portfolio management right once you invest in startup as a angel investor what are some of the things that you should be doing not doing to add value create value in the business that you have invested in and you you mentioned an interesting model that out of your overall corpus maybe a sizable part should go to a company where you can play a slightly more active role and the rest of the money should go into startups where somebody else is playing an active role who you trust right So that one particular company where you are going to play an active role, what are some of the do's and don'ts that you that you think as an angel investor people should be doing? So we we were requesting our investors at least in one startup because the startup journey, it is I see like a relay race, uh, Rakesh. Uh, uh, when I invest in seed stage, I am carrying him on my shoulder to overcome certain difficulties, get the business connects, reach certain level. then an institutional investor will come in series a then my role in the as a driver seat is done i am giving the relay race to him after that we don't add any value for them except giving an advice any troubles are there we are he knows we are there as a support but this journey of moving from seed to series a before an angel investor coming in the lead investor which we call in this ecosystem or super angel who is investing larger money they play a bigger role in helping that startup to identify their weaknesses their strengths and weaknesses i think members can identify who can help them to overcome that short period of 2 3 months if they spend and changes mindset it is very useful for that startup to change its game and move it forward actually we have seen uh that success happening in some of our portfolios where our members have contributed substantial amount of time coming and spending time with them helping that guy to understand and do it if they don't do it by investing assuming the money will grow we felt it way it has never happened for us we need to spend the time bring our angel and ask them to help on that weakness and overcome that issue if needed if needed i request many of the members also who are investing in startup 
if you feel he is improving, he is doing better, do some small follow on with him. That gives a lot of confidence for that guy to boost it to the next level. I think that's that's useful. Uh, uh, switching gear, Ratnakar sir. Now I'll ask you to do a little bit of crystal gazing, right? Beyond right. beyond managing the startup as well. Uh, if you have to kind of pick up a specific set of sectors or a specific set of themes in the angel investing space, right? okay, you believe that over the next three years this is going to be a theme that you should be looking at because of the macro factors which are there. What would that be? As I said, fintech now agritech is picking up very well. Hmm. Space techs have opened up for private segment. We are seeing many companies coming in that space actually. And we are seeing 5G based deep tech companies okay. are going to do extremely well, extremely well. There is a lot more to do on conversational AI, speech to text. We are observing the trends very closely. Mm -hmm. So that's where our investments are there. But we are looking into other segments, but we don't want to. Uh, splash money on that, but we want to be very careful in investing in other segments because the market size is not that great as we see today. Understand. And enterprise size is evergreen. They grow small, they grow big, they don't lose money for investors. I think in many of the VC world, enterprise size is one of the key right. investment criteria. Right, right. No, I think that that's a pretty hot space in a series B, series B space right. uh, for startups. So I think that's that's very useful. Um, I'll take a pause and in case uh, there is some question from the audience, we can take a few of them uh, as such and then we'll move to the next thing. Uh, feel free to type in any questions that you might have. And I'll meanwhile also read out some of the poll results that we had run earlier. Uh, so the first question that we had was around, do you actively invest in startups? I think we have a fairly interesting set of answers. There were 53% people saying that they have actively invested in startups and around 38 saying that they haven't. So, which is, which is a fairly decent mix. I mean, with some of the knowledge which Ratnakar Shah has shared here, hopefully we will have those 38% people also transform and start actively looking at startup investment. I think Hyderabad Angel is a great platform to do that. I think we have Thai India Angel as well, which also kind of uh, is floating a lot of interesting companies to invest in startup as well. So uh, do check out some of those things. Uh, Thai actually has every month uh, three or four startups in variety of stages uh, that get circulated. And uh, there is a, there's a WhatsApp group and an email group that you can look at and, and have detailed analysis of these companies which keep coming up as well. Uh, so that is one poll. The second poll is how do you prefer to invest in startups? I think, again, the answer here is flipped. 33% people say that uh, they invest directly into startups and 67 say that they're through angel networks. I think, again, it's a very personal preference uh, question. I think if you have great mechanism to source interesting deals, then yeah, direct investment makes a lot of sense. But now there are a whole bunch of angel networks uh, which have come up and some of them in, are doing some terrific job of deal sourcing. So I think that makes it easier for you to kind of pick up startups that you want to want to invest in. So yeah, that trend kind of continues to be there. Um, on, on the third question, which is essentially, have you made money from your startup investment? I'm quite happy to see almost 80% uh, for at least five people have answered this question. 80% 80 people, 80 of the people have actually made money out of the startup. So this is very, very good. My, my internal analysis was slightly different. I think I see a lot of people who have also lost money, but I think this is good that 80% of the people have made money out of the startups uh, that they have invested in. So that's the interesting also. Great. I think that was the poll results. Do we have any questions, audience questions, uh, Vamsi? Uh, okay. I, I don't think we have uh, any audience questions. So we'll move uh, to the last part of our conversation, Ratnagar sir. Any closing thoughts? I mean, we have, I told you one of the aims uh, that we have is that how do you bridge the gap between 467 and 1500 between Hyderabad and Mumbai? And we believe that startup investing could one of the way could be one of the ways to do that, right? What what would be your parting thoughts to the to the members of the Thai CM uh, in their startup investing journey? Yeah, I think thank you for the right question. See, I feel uh, people who have not experienced startup in the past, I request them to use any of the angel network, whether it is Hyderabad Angels or 
some other it doesn't matter that will give a good experience because the collective wisdom of people will give good insights actually we have seen many people who are part of hyderabad angels they learn a lot of things as a part of the journey they also understood certain things and they went out and started on their own and doing their investments so most of them are doing extremely well after that so i request any member who are coming new into the startup ecosystem don't burn your hands going directly and investing in startup come into the group learn over a period of one year and go back and do what you feel is right because the deals are flowing for many of them today as long as you are making a big name in the startup ecosystem that's what i suggest and rakesh many of the people also said because in hyderabad wealth is there what we understand is angel investment needs certain time from all this hnis who are part who are created wealth we found they are not able to spend the time in investing into the startups so most of our hnis are be part of lps to many fund investing which i observed in the market today so we have a audience question for you uh, ratnagar sir um, the question is from ravindra uh, it does so basically the question is in angel network who makes the decision right and who decides to lead the startup right so that essentially who makes the decision on where to invest how to invest and all of that valuation and uh, is there a lead role uh, who plays the lead role with the startup so uh, initially over a period of time whoever puts the larger money into that startup generally used to take the lead generally it is 90% of the cases is what people used to because he is putting more money and skin into the game he should be the lead of the startup ecosystem but what i feel personally is there are certain people who has well versed in that particular sector today he may not have required money because they would have put the money in other startups believing in them but they have the capacity and deliver that particular startup to next level we are requesting them to be part of the lead because they understand that industry very well we were requesting on that so that will really make uh, a portfolio more successful than the person who is putting larger money because some people have larger money never had a relevant experience of running that sector running that particular industry got it got it then uh, we have a question from pradeep noble sir so you want to come on uh, once again you and you sir yeah please no. uh, yes sir i'm not, not very good at typing you know so i thought <laughs> let me request for muting no uh, one of the issues is you know government speaks so much and they supposed to be giving a lot of support to startup india and things like that but the entire money system they channelize through sidbi now sidbi again does not make uh, kind of a angel investing uh, friendly investment they want to put the money into vc funds or even the more advanced level of fund so it's again getting channelized through fund well angels uh, angel investing stage seed stage you are not going to the fund really funds want somebody who already has as uh, tagar mentioned 1 crore per month turnover etc etc you know so that is one second point is the angel investors taxation issue is not uh, friendly for angel investors you know so many income tax inquiries keep coming in and even the capital gain that you make are taxed in a different manner compared to the uh, public uh, markets and public markets are public markets the uh, angel investing is far riskier than public markets so if anything there should be further incentivization of uh, angel investing so any thoughts on that i thought i'll just raise that up. yeah yeah thank you sir i think uh, as i've met many times a uh, lot of interviews of modi or ktr in hyderabad they said government will only be a facilitator Point number one. They said we will not be part of this ecosystem. We are not. I think Modi is rigorously saying he don't want to get into the business. He's selling lot of even steel plant of Vizag is getting sold, and many of the Navratnas is saying I don't want to get into the private business, running a business. Second thing, what I observed said is the person who is heading this government organization, either it is Sidbi. they are not risk averse like uh, vcs of the world and other thing they only think 
okay, this is the government money. How do I get back? If you see startup funds which are coming to many ACSQs or accelerators or incubators, they're trying to give as a debt, assuming the money will come back. <laughs> Correct. So I was asking why you are doing it. Sir, they, they want this money to be run around three, four times. We'll give it as a debt. If the company is successful, they'll give the money back or we'll convert it to equity later point of time. So uh, I was telling uh, Pradeep sir, is a sudden surge in startup ecosystem. Do you have skilled manpower who can run the startup ecosystem today? We being there for more than a decade. My experience of being there almost for five years, and that's what I say, the collective wisdom of five years seeing more than 10,000 startup demo days every day and watching news. I'm drinking, eating, and doing a startup <laughs> every day. Where have that experience, which I see in the market, everybody is becoming an incubator manager or a startup angel network. They're just saying, oh, we come, Baba, this is interesting startup invest. This is it. But until as they lose money, nobody is speaking about it, actually. And nobody wanted to speak when they lose money. When they gain money, only they are speaking. So that's what I see, sir. The issue is with the culture, what we developed and what government wanted to do. Coming back to taxation, everybody in the world is saying Modi is only focused on taxation including the cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. Everybody ask, I want policy for cryptocurrency. They have given a 30% tax. Where is the policy? Mm -hmm. Correct, no? So I don't know why unlisted shares need to get taxed at 20% as we all feel pity. But your investment uh, request of angel notices, now it is not there, sir. It is completely gone. But uh, the old one which we are facing, that is continuing. You should put a police stop which is not making it, actually. Okay. Great. So, Moscow has made uh, one comment. When do you make an exit? How do we control our greed? <laughs> so, I answered that question, Vasugaru. I told you that uh, at early stage to Series B, your returns are more than 10x. Sometimes it is uh, a bear, but after that, the returns are going to come down. What I request is take an exit, reinvest there. Don't hold it. 100x is an outlier. I think Rajan Anand and a few of the members who invested in 2011, they've seen 100x return. Now I don't think people will see 100x return in the current market because VCs also learn the art and they are saying giving an exit to angel investors is a sunk cost for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and Pradeep Dabla are saying every secondary transaction happening with angel is coming with minimum of 25% discount on current round and going up to 50% on the current round. They are not giving that money, sir. That is gone. The, the days are gone now. 100x written days are gone. Great. Uh, I guess we are run, going to run out of time. Thanks a lot, uh, Ratnakar, sir, for Thank the you. insightful uh, ideas and suggestions. I think you can go a long way in terms of planning a lot of our strategy around angel investing as well. And we'll get the community also excited about angel investing. Like I said, uh, there is a decent amount of deal flow which happens at Hyderabad Angels and at Thai India Angels Network as well. And uh, I'm hoping that more and more CMs will participate and actually look at it closely. I mean, participate is the next step, but start looking at it closely and see if there are startups where they can add value, right? where they can actually help the founder, help the company grow. And then it's possible also invest in the business as well. So thanks thank again you. for your time. Um, over you. to you, uh, Srinivas Sir and Monty. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Closing, Rakesh, uh, before closing, I would like to say, we seen in many industries, there is a surge of activity. Later consolidation is happening. Mm -hmm. You would have seen. We are expecting this uh, startup surge, what you're seeing, the small angels, big angels, other angels, which is happening will get diluted over a period of three years and they're going to get into uh, three, four angel networks in there. I don't see much more is going to happen, though we are seeing more than 100. And I want each of the angel network whoever is running it, be watchful, have good corporate governance and see that it reaches that pinnacle. Otherwise, Geo came, all the cell, cell towers have gone. Indigo, Indigo came, Jet Airways, everybody has gone. Looking into that. In steel industry consolidation, this consolidation has become the key in the market. I want people to watch out that actually. And you're right. I think over a period of time, essentially the networks which are able to source the best of the deal will continue to exist. Everybody else will then need to get some sort of discount. Right. Yeah.
thank you, Rakesh, for moderating the session so well, so incisively. And Mr. Ratnakar for his very calm and collected responses. Shows how seasoned a player you are. My personal takeaway from this is the points you mentioned about the cap table, the market size, the CGR growth, and how younger people bring more energy into a startup system. So these are some nice takeaways. Uh, thank you, both of you, for a wonderful session. Uh, Vamsi, just remind everybody about our sponsors once again. And it's uh, over. Yes, uh, thank you, Rakesh, sir. Thank you, Ratnakar, sir, and everyone who joined us all today. And we definitely want to thank our annual sponsors, uh, Bitcom Group, Boxen University, Athena Global Tech, Dallas Venture Capital, Kijing, Cooper Labs, Lowstra Advisors, uh, Stratcap Advisory, we have Ezone Securities, Finvista, and Jupiter Avenue Investment Funds. Uh, this wouldn't have been possible with all this support and trust in us for the entire year. Thank you so much for all the uh, participants who joined us and a special thanks to Takesh sir and also Ratnaka sir for joining us today for this wonderful evening. With that said, we will now officially uh, close the call for the day. Uh, it was a well Rakesh, tight Rakesh, one-hour session. Rakesh, can I ask you a personal question? Is, is, is that setting behind you looks like a bar. I yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, artistically <laughs> done one. Is it a real one or it's a photograph? No, no, it's a, it's a virtual. It's, a, it's a, not a real background. A, <laughs> I wish it was a real background. 7 o'clock, I would have loved it. I was thinking of dropping in there if it was a real one. No, no, I would have loved to get a drink. And, we'll, we'll, and, and, we'll wait for Metaverse to be active. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That would be a good one. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.